Um, good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Erica Mashig. I'm the manager of parks with the city. Um, before I go through our introductions and agenda, I'm going to kick off our meeting tonight with a few Zoom tips. Um, I'm going to ask that everybody feel free to keep their camera on or off during the presentation portion of the open house, but please do try to keep your video on through the small group discussions. This portion of the open house will be highly interactive and keeping your camera on will help us all feel connected like we're in a room together. If you do experience any freezing, try turning off your camera. It often helps resolve the issue. Um, I can hear some background noise, so that brings me to my next tip. Um, if you can please stay on mute during the presentation and when you're not speaking as we move into our small group discussions, that would be much appreciated. Um, for those who are familiar with Zoom, we will not be using the chat function this evening. Um, instead, we'll be answering questions and discussing your ideas and aspirations in our small group discussion portion of the meeting. Lastly, I do want you all to be aware that we are uh, recording the presentation tonight. I'm sorry, I'm just going to ask if everybody can please mute. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll talk a little louder. Um, we will be recording the presentation tonight and we'll be posting uh, the presentation on the city's Be Heard West page. Um, we'll, you'll see the link up in the upper right hand portion of your screen there. So please take, take note of that website. Um, so for those who can't join us tonight can watch the open house presentation and provide their feedback on their own time. Okay, and I will now move into some introductions. Uh, we do have a team tonight of consultants as well as city staff members to help facilitate our presentation and small group discussions. Um, starting with our city staff, uh, Nell Geshevitz, our Parks and Open Space Planner, Dustin Ray Wilkes, who is the manager of Aquatics. So that includes the Moody Park Pool, the Hume Park Pool, and the Kennedy Games Pool. Mike Watson from uh, our Development Services Department. Mike is a senior planner and he's been working uh, quite closely with the Safferton Green team. So we thought he brought good value to this process. Um, Mike Anderson is also with us tonight. He's our transportation engineer uh, with the city and has um, a lot of expertise in sustainable transportation. And again, I myself, uh, I'm Erica Mashig, the manager of Parks uh, Open Space Planning, Design and Construction. And uh, from our consultant team, we have PWL Partnership. They are a Vancouver-based landscape architecture firm that have been hired to help us uh, develop the master plan for Hume Park. So Jason Wegman, who will be our main presenter tonight, um, and supporting him will be his staff, Jenna Buchko and David Stein. And now that we have introduced ourselves, uh, we wanted to get to know our participants a little better with uh, a poll question. So we're gonna start um, with asking you a quick question. You'll see it pop up on your screen in just a few seconds. Um, and when you do, please click your answer and hit submit. So the question is, during the spring and summer months, how often do you typically visit Hume Park? Just take a few seconds here for everybody to answer. And we should Great, and we have some uh, results on our screen. So it looks like more than half of us do visit the park one or more times per week. And uh, the next 20 at one to two, three times, uh, sorry, one to three times each month and then a lower percentage at another 20% less than each uh, once each month. Uh, so I guess what we're learning tonight so far about you all is that we have a lot of people that are very familiar with the park. Um, so we look forward to learning more about uh, your knowledge of the park and your aspirations for the future of the park. Um, so I'd like to next give an overview of the agenda for tonight. And again, we'll aim to finish at 8.30. 
Um, so just giving you a bit of um, orientation on how we're going to run this open house. Um, we're well now into our introductions and now talking through this agenda. The open house um, has been uh, formatted in four key parts. So the first part will give you an overview of the project information and process. So what is a master plan and how will it be developed? Next, we'll share with you our park understanding. So what analysis and findings um, do we have to date? In other words, uh, everything that we know about the park. And then the third part, um, talking about what we want to learn from you tonight. So we do have a set of questions um, and your answers will help us advance the master plan. And these first three parts should take about 25 minutes and we'll be doing a lot of talking uh, to you. Um, but then in port part four, we're gonna turn it over and really do a lot of listening. And that's the, the part where, where you guys get to put in your input um, and speak to us. So in part four, we'll break out into some small group discussions. Each group will have a facilitator and a note taker and we will record your comments and ideas. Uh, this should take about 40 minutes. To wrap up the session, we'll all reconvene into a larger group and nominate one person from each of the small groups to provide a summary of highlights of each of their respective discussions. And then we'll wrap up with our next steps and closing remarks. Again, 8.30, we'll, we'll really try hard to meet that time. Um, and at the bottom of this slide, I'd like to run through our list of big questions for tonight. So um, we're bringing these out in the beginning of the, the presentation so that you all keep them in mind. Um, as the presentation unfolds, these will be the points of discussion in our small groups. So I'll just read through them quickly. Um, the first question is, what do you love about Hume Park? The next thing we'd like to know is how you get to the park and how you move through the park and if there are any improvements that we should consider. The fourth question, we wanna know what could be done to enhance the ecologically sensitive areas within the park? And then we'd like to know how you use the park. And because it's so large, we've designated three zones um, and you'll become familiar with these tonight as we go through the presentation, um, but we call them Upper Hume, the Bluffs and Lower Hume. And the last and, and I think most important question we have for you tonight is, are there uses you would like to see added in the park in the future? So again, that's in those three designated zones, the Upper Hume Bluffs and Lower Hume Park. And I have one more important item to discuss uh, with you all before Jason starts his presentation. Um, just some guidelines for participation. And this is particularly important as we move into our small group discussions. So please remember respect is our guiding light. Balance your airtime. So if you're shy, please step up. And if you tend to be outspoken, step back and give other space to speak. Remember to challenge ideas, not people. Remember that we only speak for ourselves. And lastly, we are doing our best with the technology that we have. So fingers crossed, no, no technical glitches tonight. Um, and with that, thank you very much again for attending tonight and I'll hand it over to you, Jason. I'll even remember to turn my mute off when I start talking, the typical technical challenge that befalls us all even after a year of this. I um, wanted to say uh, thanks to everybody for joining us this evening. Uh, it's a Thursday night and it's in the evening. We're really grateful that you have enough passion and care for your city and for your park to join us this evening. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Hopefully that's working for everybody. I'm just gonna get rid of those. So <clears throat> through our poll, we, we know that a, a good percentage of you have been in the park before. And what that helps us to do is tailor the presentation this evening a bit. So we'll shift from really the basics of where Hume Park is and what does it mean? What are the facilities there? And drill in more to the familiarity it seems most of you have. But of course, knowing that everyone doesn't have a, the um, direct information necessarily straight in front of us, we did want to start on the project background. So Hume Park is undergoing a master plan process to determine the future plan and use of this park. Um, as you've all seen, there is a bit of an um, as needed improvements to the park. It has been, we need a splash pad, the 
baseball diamonds, those things have been a little bit uh, organic in the way they've developed. And what a master plan allows us to do is put into place a planning process that in this case is uh, looking at about a 20 year horizon to make sure that Hume Park, as it evolves into the new version of itself, it has all the pieces that we're looking for to make Hume Park a really complete park for the residents that are there now and future residents of Sapperton Green. Like um, any important park, um, we have to have objectives. Objectives are those things we can check box and say, have we done these things? Is that a success for the park? So in this case, we know we want to respect the cultural history of the site, that we want to integrate with the Brunette River, which is to the north. It's the blue line on your screen. That uh, this park already has a lot of passive and active recreational uses passive being things like picnics with your family or uh, reading a book and active would be more some of the sports activities, soccer, rugby, um, and finding a way to mesh those together. We want to prioritize local residents of New West. We are on the boundary of Burnaby and Coquitlam. Um, for sure, folks in those neighborhoods will come, but the city is prioritizing the local residents of New West's input. We want to improve the park's capacity for flexible spaces. So as time changes and demands shift, we can accommodate those without having to do substantial renovations. We've already meant for those things to come into play. And that we want to maintain and enhance the green connections that serve as links and become places themselves. They're not just green lines on a plan, but they're places that you can read, places that we walk our dog, places that we meet our neighbors. There we go. So what is a master plan? I touched on it a bit briefly on the slide before, but really what it is is a long-term planning document. The result of this session is not to come up with a plan that has construction documents that we start building the first sign of good weather, which surprisingly pleasantly showed up today. We're really looking at what does 20 years look like for Hume Park? How does the city manage the budget so that capital projects have the funding when they need to in order to arrive at the uh, implementation that we'll hear about tonight. And it really is, as I mentioned, this long-term planning and management decisions, both about the recreational, but very importantly in the case of this park, the ecological assets. Few parks in New West and frankly in most municipalities have the diversity of space that, these, that we see in Hume Park with the bluffs and the Brunette River. So the, the master plan is being developed uh, with about four phases. The first one we've completed, which is the inventory and analysis. We spent a year looking at what does the park have? What uh, condition are those things in? What are the ecological systems that are related to the space as our foundation for starting this work? Phase two, which we're in now is the development of high level planning directions. Where do we want to take Hume Park? And then that leads to preliminary concepts, one of our favorites as consultants, that's where we get to draw these really fun evocative drawings. And then the development of a final concept plan. In this screen, we also wanted to pause to note the Brunette River uh, east of the um, properties, the green slice of land above. That's an important part of how the Hume Park feels, but it's under consideration within the Sapperton Green Master Plan Project. So, if you would like to have additional feedback on that one, it's not something we'll dive into deeply today, but there are means through the, uh, the uh, online engagement tools that we'll be sharing with you later. So we'll site inventory and analysis, I mentioned we've already completed. The blue dot there on your left is where we are today, where we're um, meeting with you as a group to really understand um, the broad input and thoughts, one of the important pieces of the park. And it goes all the way on the right hand side there to winter 2022. So there are a number of times we get to come back together to share ideas. So you can see how we've listened to what you shared with us. Um, so the master plan intends to envision a Hume Park that meets the following principles. The first being meeting the needs of the Sapperton neighborhood with a park that is accessible, 
supports diverse users and abilities, and continues to serve as the heart of this community. That we want to protect and enhance the natural systems and the biodiversity in Hume Park that we ensure the park is flexible so that the space we have can be efficiently used and adapts to changing needs. And then maintaining and enhancing the green connections that become places themselves. There are already a number of two greenways that come through, strengthening those connections to the future separate and green will uh, further reinforce that. The key topics that we looked at when we did the uh, site inventory and analysis report is the uh, urban context and park history, uh, park user groups, amenities and programs, the connectivity of the park to the surrounding area, that it's part of the regional watershed and the Burnett River. And we looked quite importantly at the biophysical attributes. As you know, from having been to the park, this is anything but your traditional flat space with a soccer field the bluffs, we've got the lower Hume, the river. Uh, it's a really, really cool and diverse space. So the next phase, which is where we're at now, is understanding those, uh, understanding the community identified priorities. In the work, stakeholder workshop that we held on February 5th, 2020, just before uh, COVID started to have the impacts it did on us, we explored uh, the current and desired future uses the environmental considerations and transportation. We had a pretty rich conversation and got a lot of really helpful information out of that evening. Hume Park, 31.72 acres, pretty substantial space as it relates to uh, other parks within the city. You can see future Sapperton Green there on the right, and it's located on Braid Street and Columbia. So, a number of green spaces, as you can see uh, on the plan, but Hume Park really being the big piece for this part of the neighborhood. Transportation is a really key part of how people get to and move around the site. This one's really well serviced from existing bus lines and roadways, and the lines on the right hand side there show the future connections with the SkyTrain station and the Sapperton Green. So really an important part of an overarching network. Within the park, we have uh, informal and, and formal trail networks. So the black lines are the paved routes. The red lines are the more informal trails throughout the bluffs. And um, on the right-hand side is another route that's part of one of the greenways. The bluffs through the middle really do provide a unique um, challenge, a unique consideration for universal accessibility. It's a very difficult place to get uh, from A to B without pretty significant interventions. Um, as Erica mentioned, we have, through that analysis, really identified the park as three places or three zones based on its natural topography. The upper terrace, which um, is where most of the active play happens. We've got the sports fields, the wading pool or the outdoor pool, the bluffs, which are predominantly just natural space at the moment with some uh, modest trails. And then the lower terrace with the ball diamond, the picnic shelter and the access to the Brunette River. This map shows the relative complexity of this site. There are a number of uh, different plant communities both within the upper Hume, the Bluffs, and the lower Hume. And these provide not only beautiful amenity for the community, but a lot of ecosystem services that, because we're so closely related to the Burnett River, really are a fundamentally important part of what this park offers, both to the bugs and bunnies, as well as to the people in the neighborhood. 17 different awesome things to do in the upper terrace. This includes uh, passive programming, uh, such as uh, the splash park and the playground areas, active programming being the baseball fields, tennis courts and lacrosse. And they're relatively well divided, but is that the best way to design the park for the long term? So this master plan will explore what are those relationships? Should they be more blended? Do they want to be a little bit more separate? The bluffs mostly that naturalized forest area and some pretty steep slopes, as we mentioned. 
the red lines there being those informal pathways that are really wonderful to walk through with your children or with your dog. But not a lot of other activity happening in there because of that uh, steep slope that we're looking at. The, the lower terrace, another really important part of this master plan and the balancing of passive and active program then programming that we'll be looking at. But here we've got about 11 different things that are easily accessible. The red line through that shows where the floodplain is. That's a pretty big ingredient in the planning process, not wanting to build or even being able to build structures or other features within that space because of the environmental regulations. <clears throat> Our report came upon four primary findings, and that is the transportation, how to, and this also comes out of the, the stakeholder session that we held back in February last year. So transportation, how do we improve uh, the visibility of this park? My first time I ended up at Lower Hume, I didn't even know there was an Upper Hume, not until the second time I went there did I realize there was a, a much bigger part of the park. Uh, circulation, how do you move between the Upper and Lower Hume? How do you move within those spaces? Ecology being this really exciting overlay on the park where in the light blue, there's this riparian or floodplain, the bluffs, and then the predominantly lawn area on top and programming largely on the upper Hume area, the terrace. And then graphically putting those together, you can see the challenges that we have with this. How do we bring all these different pieces together and make it a really cohesive and adaptable park? As Eric mentioned, one of the questions that we'll be exploring with everyone in the uh, breakout groups is, what is it that you love about Hume Park? We'll use that information to try and retain and protect those. We'll use it to evolve and enhance those. And <clears throat> we'll use that to understand the programming. So is the barbecue shelter something that's really important and a programming piece that needs to be expanded? Do, uh, do you predominantly use it as a cycleway between different parts of the city? So that's really this transportation key finding. How do you move from the outer area into the park itself? How do you get to Hume Park? Do you bike? Do you drive? Are you fortunate enough to live around the corner and able to walk there? All of those things are really uh, big influences on how the park plan comes together. As I mentioned, circulation within the site. How do you move between those three really distinct spaces? How do we make it possible for people of all ages and mobility to navigate through all portions of Post Park of the park? So we'll be asking the question: how do you typically move through? Are you walking, cycling? Are you are there ways that you consider um, that we can help make it easier to move around in the Hume Park? more paved paths or different graded slopes. Ecology, um, how do we protect the Burnett River and the sensitive ecological areas in Hume Park? Um, replacing the bluffs with uh, active play is obviously not a good move. How do we build in that programming and protect the ecology at the same time? A really interesting challenge for the team and we love to, we look forward to hearing what you think of that. So what can we do to improve those ecologically sensitive areas that are in Hume Park? Here's a picture of the Burnett River in the summertime. Programming, the, the piece that most people expect to talk about when it comes to park planning. Is soccer the most important thing? Is um, taking your children to the splash park the thing you do the most? That's really important information for us to know how to plan for the park in the short term as well as for the long term. Programming within the park is pretty diverse at the moment. Lots and lots of things we can do there now. What do we need to add? What do we want to change? What do we think maybe isn't appropriate there any longer? All of that is information that we really want to learn from you. And just to take a pause, the Be Heard New West website is the next place after this evening to uh, share that information with us. Upper Hume, uh, as you can see in the diagram, um, what are the future uses that really are important to add up in that space or to keep? 
in the bluffs, what should happen there, given that we know we need to keep the slope stable, that we want to maximize those ecosystem services and protect that habitat area. And then lower him, what are the future uses that we should add in there for uh, the long term protection of the Burnett River? How do we reintroduce people to loving nature and feeling comfortable in nature in an urban setting? And then the, again, this diagram that shows the uh, complexity of what we're looking for, we'll, we will help make that uh, simple process for you. But in our minds, these are all the pieces that we have uh, to move together. And with that, I'm just ahead of schedule and I will uh, hand it over back to you now. <laughs>